Good morning, I'm Maddie Jansen, and this is the podcast of 17 News at Sunrise. It's everything you need to know to start your day in about 15 minutes. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Great to have you with us on this Tuesday. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher, and we could be in for yet another round of rain. Yeah, it was just a quick break, but more showers are on the way. Let's turn things over to Kevin Charette, who's got a look at your forecast on this Tuesday. Good morning, and yeah, the first leg of this is already starting to make its way into Kern County, and not in terms of rain, but in terms of some cloud cover, as you can see here, spreading in from the south, and these clouds will increase throughout the day. We may see a few sun breaks, but we are going to be looking at mostly cloudy skies. Now, to the north of us, where we we have the lack of clouds right now. We're seeing some fog. So if you are going to be uh, heading up to the north along the I-5 or the 99, you are going to run into fog from Visalia up near Fresno and also Merced. So we're down to zero visibility up that way. So just take it easy if you are traveling at north. 48 degrees in Bakersfield at this time with no winds to talk about. Visibility is good for us. And as we take a look at our Futurecast 18-hour model, we've been talking about the chance of rain. You can see on our Futurecast the clouds. And then uh, late tonight into tomorrow, we start to see that rain spread in from the south. This model is right around 11 o'clock tonight. So again, it'll be a late arrival uh, heading in the overnight hours into our Wednesday. Here's a look at our planner and you can see by 7 a.m. 50 degrees and then we'll be near 60 this afternoon under mostly cloudy skies and a light wind. And then for the Tehachapi area, 37 right now, you have a southeast wind at 10 miles per hour. Visibility is good and as we take a look at the temperatures, upper 30s to start and then we'll be in the upper 40s to lower 50s this afternoon mostly cloudy in a southeast wind right around 10 miles per hour. We'll talk much more about the chance of rain coming up in just a little bit. But first, let's get a check of the morning commute. We'll send that over to Alex. All right, Kev, thanks so much. And we're following this crash on the 58 right now that we first told you about on our website, KGET.com. And it is going to be affecting all lanes on the 58 near Union and Chester Avenue. So uh, right now, all lanes are shut down and you cannot get on the 58 from the 99. This all happened around 1 a.m. when a truck hit an electric line and shutting down all lanes in both directions. Westbound traffic is being diverted off at Union. The connector ramps between Highway 99 and Highway 58 are closed. You'll definitely want to get on the 58 from the 99 if you need to exit and then uh, get on the 58 at Chester Avenue. And there's no word on when lanes will reopen. We of, will, of course, keep you updated on this. But as you can see on this map here, this is showing you uh, where all of this is being affected. So it's quite a bit of a stretch here. So again, if you're going, uh, if you want to go into uh, the Tatchby area or go eastbound 58, you will need to go through Chester Avenue. And then if you want to um, uh, go westbound, you'll have to exit at Union. Here's a look at the 99 near 7 Standard, and it's looking pretty clear on that side of town. Everything else around the county looking great to start off your Tuesday. We'll have another check of your commute coming up in about 15 minutes. And now to an update on a story we first brought to you earlier this week. One of the suspects involved in Sunday's shooting at a hotel off Rosedale Highway has been identified. 18-year-old Keon Bolden was arrested on suspicion of attempted murder, among other charges. Bakersfield police say the shooting happened inside a room at the Rosedale Inn on Buck Owens Boulevard. Police say the victim's wounds are moderate. Officers say they chased the alleged shooters after they took off from the hotel and ran toward the Costco on Rosedale Highway. After a short pursuit, officers arrested both men. The identity of the second suspect has not been released because he is a minor. Also, the victim's identity has not been released. Meantime, Bolden is due in court later today. Jury selection began in the retrial of Leslie Chance, the former elementary school principal accused of murdering her husband in 2013. Chance faces life in prison without the possibility of parole if convicted of first-degree murder in the death of Todd Chance. Prosecutors say she killed her 45-year-old husband to collect on hundreds of thousands of dollars in life insurance policies. She's accused of shooting her husband off a dirt section of Noriega Road near Enos Lane the morning of August 25, 2013. Her first trial in June ended in a mistrial when the public defender's office declared a conflict of interest in representing her. Judge Charles Bremer said he expects jury selection to last the rest of this week. Opening statements could be heard as early as December 9th. A man will spend a couple decades behind bars after a deadly crash earlier this year in Oildale. 26-year-old Damian James Hudson pleaded no contest in October to two counts of vehicular manslaughter with gross negligence and other charges. 
Prosecutors say Hudson ran a red light in a Dodge Challenger and collided with a pickup truck back in February. The crash happened on China Grade Loop at Manor Street. 27-year-old Joshua James Andrews and 32-year-old Lori Sue Soto were ejected from the Challenger and killed. Hudson was sentenced yesterday and will spend nearly 20 years in prison. The Bakersfield Police Department's looking for a vehicle suspected of being used in a 2017 homicide. Take a look. The shooting happened in front of the Takati Market on South King Street and 3rd Street on October 8, 2017. Police say Maurice Wright was shot several times and died at the scene. A woman was also shot but survived. Here's a picture of the vehicle police are looking for. They say it's a blue or gray early 2000s model Jeep Cherokee. BPD says three black men who were 17 to 22 years of age at the time were believed to be involved in the shooting. If you have information, you're asked to call BPD at 327-7111. Now to an update on the story we've been following. More than a week after someone stole the ashes of an Oildale woman's relatives, her loved one's remains are back in her possession. Last Thursday, Melinda Clark was pleading with the public. The ashes of her late mother, Linda, and her husband, uh, her late husband, Roger, were stolen from her best friend's car. But yesterday, a ranger at Riverview Park in Oildale found the ashes. Today, when I got that phone call, it was... I don't know, I couldn't even get ready fast enough. <laughs> um, I'm just glad I got him back, and I want to thank everybody that was helping me try to look for him. Um, my friends and family, I just want to thank everybody, 17 News. And special thanks to the park ranger that turned them in. I'm just excited. <laughs> and I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed, ecstatic. Um, I can't wait to go home and put them put them up. But they will be traveling with me again. This time they're going to get out of the car every time I get out. Clark says she hopes to meet the unnamed park ranger who found the ashes. The person who stole the ashes has not been caught. 507. Now the search continues for a teenager reported missing on Sunday. Here's a picture of 15-year-old Ikima Ross. According to the Sheriff's Department, she was last seen around 1230 in the afternoon in the 500 block of Oildale Drive. That's between Warren and Bell Avenues. She was wearing a gray sweater with love written on the sleeves and minion pajama pants. If you've seen Ikima Ross or know where she is, call KCSO at 861-3110. A vigil was held for a man whose body was found on Sunday east of Bakersfield. Family members and friends of 27-year-old Angel Melendez lit candles and stood together, sharing stories of their loved one last night. Melendez's body was found on Sunday on Breckenridge Road east of Pepper Drive. The sheriff's office says he had been shot multiple times. Melendez's sisters say their brother was a great athlete and a loving man who got along with everyone. If you ever met him, you would know that... He's somebody who would put an impression on you, a great impression. If you have information on this homicide, you're asked to call KCSO at 861-3110. A local Boy Scout working toward his eagle opens up about his struggles and his successes on his journey. The 17th tab at the Mills will join us coming up. Welcome back. The Eagle Scout Award is scouting's highest rank. It requires years of service and dedication to scouting and our community. It's a difficult award for anyone to achieve, but for a local teenager on the autism spectrum, he says he's come too far not to succeed. Tabitha Mills joins us now with his story. That's right. Good morning, Maddie Good morning. and Alex. James Fulfer says Boy Scouts changed his life, and I think he should tell you why. It's been an essential essential part of my childhood and like just getting an Eagle Scout you know it's confirmation that like for me at least like to prove that I can get something done I can do this. James Fulfer has been a scout since he was six. A member of Boy Scout Troop 194 scouting has made a tremendous impact on his life. Scouts is really sort of how I came out of my shell so to, so to speak. He's learned leadership, he's learned presentation skills, he's learned money management skills. It's really about life skills and all these fun outdoor activities are just the conduit by which we're teaching them 
how to learn, how to lead, and how to be a responsible member of society. The 16-year-old is a junior at Centennial High School. As a teenager on the autism spectrum, this interview wasn't easy for James. It is really difficult for me to talk to people. It's difficult for me right now, to be fair. But that didn't stop James. For me, a challenge is almost always an opportunity to come up with a solution. A mentality he learned as a scout. Really, like, there are some times where you have to, like, put yourself for, forward and say, I have to do this or for everyone, everyone else's sake. James is a member of Elizabeth Ann Seton Catholic Church, where he attends Mass with his family. My grandmother would come over to my family for Christmas, and... We, we would almost always go to Christmas Eve Mass. I don't think there's been a year where we didn't go. And the last few years, her mobility issues had worsened, and it came to a point where we would leave her off at the traffic circle, like, so we can find a space to park without having to make her walk to that far. It was at that moment where I realized that it'd actually be pretty nice that there was a bench for her to sit there. Months of work and fundraising later, James will soon be the reason for new benches outside of St. Elizabeth's. An act of kindness that will greatly help others and could help James earn an Eagle Scout award. But really, award or not, it seems James is already a top-notch scout. If you don't give them a chance to grow and flourish, they probably are not going to do it without giving an opportunity. If you want to go to scouts, like give it a give it a shot. I gave it a shot, and it's gotten me here. It's been a wonderful part of my life, and I'm glad I I'm glad I made that decision to do. And I hope that someone else who is one, who is interested should do it because you you accomplish you you accomplish something. James is wrapping up a few final details, and he hopes the benches will be installed at St. Elizabeth's by Christmas. Very exciting. So, what an outstanding young man. He's very outstanding. He's raised all the money. He's done all the footwork. Now it's just a matter of time before they get there. Great so, story. So Thanks, exciting. Guys. Our 17 Days of Christmas toy drive is underway. And we need your help. We'll tell you when and where you can donate and what we need when we come back. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. Gift giving can bring stress during the holiday season, but so can deciding who in your life you should give a tip to and how much. Money reporter Stacey Johnson will help ease the stress with these tips. Deciding who to shop for during the holiday season is enough of a challenge, but what about deciding who in your life should get a holiday tip? Who you tip and how much boils down to three things. How often you use the service, how much you can afford, and finally, etiquette. Let's start with the etiquette. It is considered proper to tip people who give you services, such as hairdressers, garbage collectors, personal trainers. It's not considered in good taste to offer cash to a teacher, and some workers aren't allowed to take cash, such as postal workers. But you can give a postal worker a small gift or food item worth 20 bucks or less, and you certainly can give a teacher a gift card. Either way, be sure and give a nice card with that gift, and if it's to the teacher, Make it from your kid, too. Next, think about people who provide regular services. Here's a list of people and suggested tips from the Emily Post Institute. A babysitter or nanny should receive one week's pay and a gift from your child. Your hairdresser would get the amount of one service, a daycare provider, 25 to 70 bucks, lawn care person, 20 to 50, and trash or recycling collectors, 10 to 30 dollars each. Finally, the longer your relationship with that service provider, the nicer your gift could be. But never overextend yourself to give a tip. Bottom line, tipping is a great way to say thank you to the people who take care of you all year. But you should never, ever feel bad if you can't afford to give a tip. You should feel bad, though, if you can't afford to at least give somebody a note or say thank you. Want more tips on tipping? They're waiting for you at moneytalksnews.com. Just do a search for holiday tipping. For Money Talks News, I'm Stacy Johnson. Money Talks is brought to you by your local consumer credit counseling service. If you've got debt problems or just want some free budget counseling, call today. 
Well, our 17 days of Christmas toy drive is underway. We are collecting toys and gifts until December 17th. The toys will benefit children and teens through Bakersfield Homeless Center and the Boys and Girls Clubs of Kern County. You can drop off new unwrapped gifts at our studios here at 2120 L Street, the Homeless Center on East Truxton, or at the Boys and Girls Clubs on Nile Street. Yeah, it is uh, December 3rd, so we're a couple days in, and we've got a couple of gifts in the lobby, which is good to see. But again, we love to see our lobby fill up throughout the, the next couple of weeks, weeks, so please come on down. And don't forget those teens, because we yeah. always get lots of gifts for the little kids, and that's fantastic. We need those too, but we, we want to remember the teenagers.